In this example, we're going to determine the radius and the interval of convergence for the following power series. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n divided by 8 raised to the nth power times x plus 6 raised to the nth power. First thing we're going to observe here is the center of our power series. Now the center of our power series is typically what we get by taking this and setting it equal to 0 and solving for x. In this case, that would give us x is equal to negative 6. What that means is when I'm constructing my interval of convergence, I'm going to expect that negative 6 is going to be the middle number in that interval, and it'll extend a certain way to the left of negative 6 and a certain way to the right of negative 6 on the real number line. Now, based on what I see here, not everything is a power of n, which is why I'm going to apply the ratio test. In the event that everything is a power of n, I insist, go ahead and use the uh, root test for that. So we'll be setting up the expression, the limit as n approaches infinity, of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1, the n plus 1th term, divided by the original term. Now this is going to be rather sizable, so I'm going to give myself a little extra space here. And the idea is I'd like to express this as a single fraction divided by a single fraction. So in my numerator, I'll have a square root of n plus 1. I will have an x plus 6 raised to the n plus 1 power. And in that denominator, we'll have an 8 to the n plus 1 power, just replacing all of the n's with an n plus 1. In my denominator, I'm going to have the square root of n, x plus 6 raised to the nth power, all over 8 to the n. As is typical in the ratio test, we have a single fraction divided by a single fraction, which is why I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator. So once again, square root of n plus 1 times x plus 6 to the n plus 1 power, all over 8 to the n plus 1 power, and we'll take the reciprocal of this denominator. 8 to the n on top, square root of n, and x plus 6 raised to the n on the bottom. Now as we did with previous examples of the ratio test, anything that looks like something else in the numerator and denominator we group together. Square root goes with the square root. We'll call that the square root of n plus 1 divided by the square root of n. The 8's will go together, so 8 to the n on top. 8 to the n plus 1 on the bottom, and x plus 6 to the n plus 1 power on top, with an x plus 6 raised to the n power on the bottom. <clears throat> At this point I'd like to start simplifying things, which is why I'm going to do the following. Anytime we have a radical divided by a radical, we can express that in terms of a single radical. So this is the same as saying the square root of n plus 1 over n. I'm then going to take that n from the denominator and distribute to the two terms in the numerator, meaning that I can express that as 1 plus 1 over n underneath the radical. If I subtract these two exponents, 8 to the n minus n plus 1, the negative sign distributes through and we'll get an 8 to the negative 1 power. Alternatively, this could be thought of as 8 times 8 raised to the nth power. Cancel out the nth powers and you're left with an 8 in the denominator. A similar argument lets us know that the last term is going to wind up being x plus 6. In this form, we're ready to take the limit as n goes to infinity. The 1 over n will go to 0, and we will be left with the following expression. x plus 6 all over 8 inside the absolute value. The ratio test lets us know that as long as this quantity is less than 1, we're guaranteed to have a convergent series. Now, absolute value inequalities means that this thing is going to have to be in between negative 1 and positive 1. Additionally, it's currently unknown whether or not it's going to converge at its endpoints, so I'm going to include a little dotted line underneath to indicate I'm not sure whether or not it should be equal to those values. To solve this inequality, I begin by multiplying all three parts by 8.
and then subtracting 6 from all three parts. That should be dashed, not solid. So we get negative 14 is less than maybe equal to x, which is less than maybe equal to 2. I refer to this as the initial interval of convergence. It's going to be from negative 14 to 2. And we don't know whether these should be parentheses or brackets because we'll need to test the endpoints. What I do know, based off of this though, is that from the center of negative 6 going out to negative 14 or going up to positive 2, the distance from 6 to either of these values is going to be equal to 8. Which lets me know that my radius of convergence is going to be equal to 8. We can say that definitively at this point. Next, I'll need to test my two endpoints to see whether or not we actually have convergence at those endpoints. So what I'm going to do is head back to my original series, and I'm going to plug in x equals negative 14 and x equals 2. So I'm plugging in x equals negative 14 to the original series. The original series would then become the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n divided by 8 raised to the n power. Plugging in x equals negative 14, we would get negative 14 plus 6 raised to the nth power. We need to determine the convergence of this series to find out whether or not to include this endpoint. So simplifying this a bit, <clears throat> we'll get the following. This is the square root of n divided by 8 to the n, and simplifying this expression, this will be negative 8 raised to the n power. Doing a little bit more algebra, when you have a negative 8 to the nth power divided by 8 to the nth power, they can be expressed together. Negative 8 divided by 8 raised to the nth power. This is because exponents will distribute over multiplication and division. One more small alteration to this lets me know that this is going to be equal to negative 1 to the nth power times the square root of n. Now just to get an idea for what this series looks like, I'm going to expand this out a few terms. Plugging in 1, we'll get negative 1 to the first power times the square root of 1. Then we'll let the alternator take over, and every other term will change from positive to negative or vice versa. <clears throat> because it's an alternating series, you could very easily apply the alternating series test. One of the things to show for the alternating series test is take away the alternator, prove that this thing is decreasing and converges to zero. However, one can see right away that that is not the case. this tends toward infinity. Therefore, this series diverges. The conclusion that we can draw out of all of this is that negative 14 is not included in the interval of convergence. So with that in mind, let's check our other endpoint. The other endpoint that we arrived at from the previous page was x equals 2. So I'll be taking x equals 2 and plugging it into the original interval of convergence. So plugging in x equals 2, we will arrive at the following series sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n divided by 8 raised to the n power times 2 plus 6 raised to the nth power. Simplifying using similar algebra to what we did for x equals negative 14, this will be the square root of n over 8 to the n times, simplifying this, we'll get 8 to the n. As a result, the 8 to the n's will cancel each other out, and we'll be left with 
the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n. Similar to what we did for the previous one, this is not an alternating series, but it is going to diverge by the divergence test. The divergence test states that if the corresponding sequence does not converge to zero, then this will not converge. Using the same limit as what we used for the previous example, we see that this diverges. As a result, our final answer for the interval of convergence will be the open interval from negative 14 to positive 2. Open on both because it diverged when we plugged in both, therefore it cannot be part of the interval of convergence.